Greetings Commanders, another fun video this time exploring the Anaconda in Elite Dangerous. More of a walkthrough really, but more on this later. The Anaconda, manufactured by Falcon de Lacy and will cost you around 147 million credits, depending on the way you go to buy it, is 155 meters in length, 62 meters wide and 32 meters high. It boasts 8 hardpoints, 1 huge, 3 large, 2 medium and 2 small. It is considered by many as one of the best exploration ships in the game, with a jump range of 42 light years increasing to 84 light years once fully engineered. Also, it is arguably a formidable combat ship and can hold up to 468 tons, useful for various missions and for mining, falling into the category as a multi-purpose ship. Walking across its length really does provide a sense of scale. It doesn't take this long to walk across the length of my house. In my opinion, it is one of the most beautiful and elegant ships in the game. It's sleek, debonair, sophisticated and very sexy. For a lot of commanders, Odyssey felt noticeably short when it came to ship interiors, but there's a bug I have encountered that would allow you to explore the ship interior as the ship design currently stands. This only occurs when using the camera suite when standing on the ship. The thruster animations and fidelity here looks amazing, doesn't it? I'm just going to go down the side of the ship here and attempt to go through the pressure door. You're going to have to use some imagination here. As I walk down this corridor, I'm just going to turn left here and enter the main cockpit area. As I approach the main pilot seat, it would be nice if Frontier would allow you to climb into your seat, providing the immersion a lot of commanders are desperately wanting to experience. For reasons I partially understand, the cockpit graphic loses its fidelity when you move the camera outside of the ship. I suspect this is done to reduce memory usage to allow the game to run as smoothly as possible. I suppose because you are not inside the cockpit, there really isn't any need for exactness and detail. As we pass through this door, all immersion up to this point will be completely lost. There is so much space inside this ship. As we travel through the ships inside, you can see where extra effort has been made to provide detail when looking from outside to within these locations. Here are the small hard points. The Anaconda is unique in that it has two cargo hatches. One in the front to allow manual scooping of materials and canisters, we will reach that one in a bit, and one near the rear for when collecting materials and canisters using limpets. This is the hatch used for when using limpets. This hatch never opens, hence not much interior detail. This is the fighter bay where it is obvious more effort has been made to provide more detail in an effort to immerse the player into thinking they are actually in a fighter bay. Next we come across the huge hard point. Not much effort on detail here has been made. Now we approach the front cargo hatch mentioned earlier which also doubles as the SRV bay. Even though I have SRVs on board they are not kept rendered, potentially for memory saving purposes again. Frontier have stated on occasion in the early years of the game that ship interiors would come in. It seems to me they have designed the ships with this in mind but priorities have obviously changed. I can certainly see how challenging it would be to fill all this space with rooms, corridors, conduits, access hatches, stairwells or even lifts and make it look convincing to provide the immersion of walking through a ship. Here you can see some sort of memory reallocation saving techniques where rendering of the cockpit is less detailed, even from the outside despite your commander sitting in the pilot seat. In Elite Law there is no artificial gravity. I suppose this is an additional challenge that FDEV are struggling with when it comes to ship interiors. However, they seem to have overcome this on outposts where there is no centrifugal forces being used to simulate gravity. 
Instead, commanders wear magnetic boots. But this does not explain the rubbish seen on the floor at outposts. But that's for another video. Now let's simulate what it would be like walking down this corridor. But the graphics here are quite pixelated. The secondary graphical layer adds a bit of dim, creating some depth, but I still feel it could be much better. The skin of the ship and extra detail such as mechanical or engine components look amazing. Obviously more effort has been applied to these areas. But I'm not really sure what's going on here with that floating graphic. As you can tell, I'm in the camp of commanders who really want to see ship interiors in Elite but understand the argument that it would not add much gameplay and once you've explored your ship a few times it would get monotonous. I see this already with station interiors where the design does not differ much. Once you've visited one, you pretty much have visited all of them. Don't get me wrong, I have been playing Odyssey non-stop from when Alpha began and can't wait to see what more Odyssey will bring later this month. This is where I'll leave it commanders, I'll leave you with some aerial shots of the Anaconda. Thanks for watching, see you next time. And please hit that like button and subscribe, thanks.